Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and uh, we're at day three of the Big Gear Show in Park City, Utah. And I'm here with Brian Marsing, the marketing guy yeah. for Baku Bikes. I like that title, yeah, <laughs> great title. And we're talking about their Storm Full Suspension a uh, electric fat bike. Um, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about this bike? Yeah, so this full suspension comes in a lot of different options. We have two frame sizes. So we've got a 19 inch and a 17 inch frame size. They come in multiple different battery options from a 17.4 amp hour battery, 19.2, a 21, and we're coming out with a 25 amp hour battery. They sport the mid-drive M620 Bafang motor, 1500 max output watts, uh, continuous output of 1000 watts. And what's cool about these bikes is they can trim down into all three classifications of e-bike laws. Very cool. And so that 1,000 watt motor, that is huge. That is a big motor. But you guys cater to a very specific crowd of e-bikers, the hunters and outdoorsmen. So can you tell me why it is important to have a motor that large? Right. We, again, we started this company, as you mentioned, as hunters. We uh, carry heavy packs from 100 pound to 150 pound packs. And it's one of those things where we needed to make sure that we could haul our gear into the back country on these roads and these trails that we're able to ride these bikes on. So that was the main reason. It has 160 newton meters of torque. So when you're hauling out a mule deer or an elk or even going fishing, we love to go fishing up in the back country. Um, a lot of gear that we pack, so yeah. Very cool. So behind us, we have two different spec levels of the storm. Let's walk us through a little bit about what you guys are shipping these bikes with. Right. So our standard storm is over here, it's this green one. Again, it comes with that mid-drive motor, 160 new meters of torque, different battery options that you have, nine cassette, um, nine gear cassette, uh, Shimano and SRAM components, tech trail brakes. What we wanted to come out with, this is our newest model, is the Jaeger. This one sports the 14 gear internal roll-off hub. And on the back here, you'll see, we wanted to, to get away from, on our high-end bike, the cassette uh, chain ring here as well. And so we wanted to be able to roll it off. We climb steep mountains. And so when we're on a steep hill and we stop, we need to be able to trim that down to gear one. And so the idea behind this is with all that torque, we should be able to avoid some chain breaking. And keep in mind, we are at a trade show, so there's gonna be people kind of walking in front of the camera every once in a while. But, um, and another cool feature about that roll-off hub is you guys go out in mud, snow, ice, kind of some fairly inhospitable conditions. That's not gonna pack up like a normal rear derailleur would. It is a very reliable option. It's been really popular for a long time with long distance bike tour tours who just can't have stuff break. And you guys are kind of in that category as well. Right, absolutely, yeah. We, well, I've used my bike ice fishing. We take our bikes up on groomed snow trails all the time here in Utah. And it's a great feature to have to know that it's durable and it's gonna last. You're not gonna have any problems. Very cool, and so you guys, are very unique in how you're building this bike, or at least I think you're very unique. So yeah. I come from a traditional mountain bike background. I'm yep. used to single track. And a lot of the electric fat bikes on the market today, they're they're selling the idea of adventure. They're not necessarily a very capable bike on trails, but you guys have kind of built something a little bit different. It's not necessarily a single track trail bike. I called it a four by four earlier. Do you think that's kind of like an accurate yeah. representation of what this bike is absolutely like the way that we have marketed these bikes it's amazing the, the our age group that it's the older generation that's buying these bikes they love the fat tire they like the weight they like the stability when they're going fishing and they're going in the back country or they're camping um, they want a bike that is going to stay on the ground it's not going to be too light it's not going to come out from under them if they hit a rut right on a trail and so we wanted these to make sure that they're safe for every, every rider very cool and you guys also spend a lot of energy aside from designing bikes and actually designing your own line of accessories to go yeah. with them so what do you kind of have and i see a trailer over there specifically yeah. i imagine that's important for the hunting crowd absolutely yeah we have multiple different versions of trailers we have cargo trailers we have single wheel trailers we have 2200 lumen uh, GoPro mount headlights. Um, we have saddlebag pannier bags, which is really great to carry our gear, our, gear, our toolkits. Um, battery uh, holders, phone holders, tailgate pads. One really cool one. Um, from our understanding, we're the only one that has this. This is our battery jacket. It's a thermal battery jacket. So it's a heating element. So when you're out there in cold temperatures, this battery jacket can go around our batteries. It has its own independent battery system and you can keep that battery warm so it doesn't deplete quick. Yeah, that's actually a bigger deal than uh, maybe some newer e-bikers e might understand. 
batteries don't like cold. Yeah. And don't. you guys are going out and sometimes in sometimes sub zero yeah, or sub freezing temperatures. Sub freezing temps all the time. And so when we put this on there, it can maintain a good temperature so that battery can can remain true and, and, and not uh, have any issues with it depleting. Right now, cruising up a very large hill in Park City on Batku's Storm full suspension electric fat bike. And this thing's crazy fast. <laughs> like I'm, this bike's outfitted with the Fung Ultra mid-drive motor, which, wow, was that fast. It's uh, kind of an interesting one. We don't ride many bikes that are this powerful very often. It's got a nominal rating of a thousand watts. That's actually above what is legal in a lot of states for e-bikes. It's not a big deal. Um, Baku is following the laws. They're, this bike is easily convertible down to a 750 nominal watt rating. But Baku has this ultra powerful motor, motor because they're a, a company that caters specifically to hunters and outdoorsmen. It's a pretty cool growing niche in the e-bike world. Hunters have figured out that this is a quieter, more, I guess for some, eco-friendly way to get out in the backcountry. And it also doesn't leave any smells like a side-by-side -side wood or an ATV or a dirt bike. So we've got brands like Baku popping up specifically for hunters. And they have these ultra powerful motors for use on public lands where typical class three e-bike system isn't applicable. You know, they're obviously following whatever local regulations are and that's a whole mess of the conversation for another time, but short story, it's a really fast bike, really powerful. It's also good for like towing a trailer. That's something a lot of a lot of people that are out in the outdoors in the back country will do. They'll either put a deer on the trailer, some other animal they've gotten, camping gear, all that good stuff. But anyway, to the bike. So I'm in eco mode right now. This motor actually has two different modes. I'm in pedal assist setting four, eco mode, 10 miles an hour, cruising up this pretty big hill. Pretty good pace considering this is such a heavy e-bike. I mean, this is full suspension. A lot of metal on this thing, it's fat tires, it's heavy. But the Fung also has a sport mode on this bike. So if you hold down the plus, the screen turns red. There's a noticeable amount, even in pedal assist four, more umph. Let's kick it up a five for fun. And this is their Jaeger model, which is kind of their super high-end bike. It's actually got a roll-off hub which I haven't ridden in a long time, but they're super cool. It's an internally geared hub. I think there's something like 17 gears, but the very unique feature about it is you actually have to stop pedaling to shift. So start coasting and you can shift multiple gears at once. So excuse me, I missed both. There's 14 gears, but it is a ultra crisp, ultra reliable because again, it's an internally geared hub. So for the use case of this bike, which is the backcountry, you're not gonna get mud, it's not gonna get caked with ice, no snow, no water. It's very easy to maintain. But the other added benefit is you can shift at a standstill. A normal e-bike drivetrain, even internally geared hubs, you need to be shifting to make it actually change gears. But this is like a manual car. You actually gotta let off the gas, let the motor spool down, Make sure it's disengaged from the rear hub, and then you can change gears. It's a really cool system for a bike like this. But handling-wise, you know my usual shtick with these fat tire electric bikes that are definitely marketed as kind of like an adventure bike, do anything off-road bike. Not a lot of them are super well equipped for spending time in the dirt, like really anything more than like some light duty, double track riding, dirt road riding, path riding, stuff like that. This bike, 
haven't spent much time in the dirt on, but you can just tell it's built with off-road riding in mind. Like, let's look at the handlebars, for instance. It's probably not something you just picked up by looking at them, but they are far wider than your average bar on a bike like this. You know, I, I have an enduro mountain bike that I ride personally at home, kind of like an aggressive trail riding bike. I have ultra wide 800 millimeter bars on there and this does not feel far off. And what that's done is given the bike a very smooth, predictable steering profile. It rides really, really nice. I can't speak too much to the full suspension just because you know, I, I'm pedaling this on pavement, but I know it does have a lockout. It's a RockShox rear shock, which is a really, really great addition. You know, this bike would kind of be uh, disserviced by a cheaper air can or a spring. Um, but it doesn't have a ton of, ton of pedal bomb. It feels a little springy, it's very stiff. Again, this is a super heavy bike, so you need to, to run the suspension pretty, pretty stout to handle the weight. But it rides really nice. I'm pleasantly surprised by how little bob there is. Oh, it's also got a super fast throttle. So it has class two capabilities. Again, Baku, even though they're running very powerful motors on these bikes, has been really conscious about law. They're based in Utah, just like we are. So they are very aware of the class three system. Utah has that, that class three e-bike rating system. Um, they've done a lot to make sure that wherever you are, because these laws vary by state, you can make sure this bike is meeting the law depending on where you're riding it. But yeah, let's see how this goes downhill. It's got some four pot, four piston, Tektron, Tektro brakes. Should handle speed well. The nice thing about this super wide range roll off hub is, you know, according to the speedometer, I'm doing mid 20s right now down this hill, and I've still got gear to push on. I can pedal and feel like I'm actually doing something and not just soft pedaling. Way you can really tell that this is almost more like a 4x4 e-bike versus an e-mountain bike is just how much power it has like if you're an e-mountain bike rider the first thing you notice when you swing leg over one of those bikes is how on some of the higher pedal assist settings it's just too much it's it's too much for steep hills tight corners you need something with a little bit kind of more like a scalpel right like really refined power profile and this is just like so fast so strong like I could really well picture this on some of those big famous 4x4 slick rock trails in Moab there actually is a company that's got some kind of neat videos but it's not Baku so we'll, we'll not mention them here but this would do great in a situation like that, or if you're carrying a trailer. I could really see with some additional weight on dirt or even in snow or in the mud, how having all that power off-road would be very beneficial. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. It feels like, I don't know the geometry chart on this bike, but it handles those switchbacks very well. Feels like it's got maybe a little bit more of a slacked out front end, a little bit longer wheelbase than some of the other fat tire e-bikes I've ridden recently. It's a very nice and stable at speed. It feels like it would handle off-road, kind of chunky loose stuff really nicely. Pleasantly surprised, it's a cool bike. Thanks so much, yeah, Brian. Thank you. So if you've liked this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We're doing more here with Baku and taking a look at uh, some of the other bikes that they have. So keep an eye out for those videos. If you want to know more about the Storm, you're going to find a link in our de description below to a little bit more in-depth written review of the bikes. And for Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross from The Big Gear Show. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.